There we are. Okie dokie, let's kick it off, Adam. Um, welcome everyone to the business of property. Um, I have today our special guest and he's a very exper experienced builder, Adam Barami, um, from New South Wales. However, Adam has been in building for quite a few years, Adam, and how many years would that be? Why can't I hear you? Are you muted, Adam? Uh, since uh, hi, hi, uh, <laughs> since ninety nine, so about twenty one years. Yes, yeah, fantastic. And you are the owner of Owner Developer. Um, and you know, today, Adam, we've we've invited Adam to talk about the top ten tips to choose a quality builder you can trust. And this is this is a topic that. Um, anyone that's developing, anyone that's building their own home, but particularly, you know, we're in a property development group. Um, and we want to be able to know what are the key things we want to want to be able to look out for. So thank you, Adam, for joining us and spending, you know, the time to put together um, the presentation that you have for us. But Adam, tell us a little bit about yourself, a bit about the history of um, owner developer and Barami group as well, and, and, and where you operate in Australia. Oh, certainly. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Adam Brahmi uh, from Owner Developer. Uh, I'm a licensed builder, uh, developer and a professional construction coach. Um, I um, started operating um, as a builder uh, since 1999, so it's about 21 years. And, um, and for quite some time, uh, we traded on the Barami Group Proprietor Limited. Barami is my surname. And then um, about a year, year and a half ago, um, through a, a couple of um, a, a good mentors, um, we've been uh, sort of, we decided to rebrand. And, and so that's where the owner developer and, and two, of our, two of our other brands uh, develop. Um, at Owner Developer, we provide um, property development services such as um, development briefing, site acquisition, feasibility, site analysis, um, construction management and coaching, and, um, and joint venture sort of partnering. Um, I'm also a licensee builder of a company called Renault Co Australia, which is a Sydney-based design and built company uh, specializing in boutique custom built home renovation and extension. My daughter Ida started this company last year um, and it all came out of asking for promotion actually. Um, and um, and um, she look after, she's, she's architectural designer. She look after architectural design and project admin and, and management side of it. Um, for, for many years, I started as a insurance builder specialist. So for many years, I've been the preferred builder by major insurance companies where our expert report and the scope has been used, utilized for home warranty, um, builder liability and general building insurance claims. Um, so I've got a bit of a uh, sort of a insurance building background. That's excellent. And um, Ida is here today. And I, uh, I think it'll be, I've seen, you know, a few of us have seen um, videos of her um, in, in the group, which is fantastic because I believe Ida's only quite young. She's Ida's in her early she's, 20s. She's 21, yes. And it's fantastic to see um, someone that's, that's focused, obviously passionate about what she does. Um, and you're not just sort of, you know, given, you haven't just given her, given her a promotion, you've given her a part of a business, yeah, which she yeah. has ownership of. So um, I, I know you're here. I want to say um, you've done extremely well. And I think, you know, I'm sure, sure dad's very, very proud of you, the following in his footsteps. Excellent. <laughs> so Thank you. Thank you. I, I really like this, the topic, topic here and it's, and it's an opportune time because I've got two projects that we're looking for a builder for, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure, and, and, and constantly we have post um, in the group that uh, people are looking for good builders. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what we need to look for to be able to identify what a, a good builder is. And particularly that word about being able to trust that builder as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
as I said, I've been building since '99, and 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 that's that's um, that's about 21 years now. And for 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 all those years, I've always had a fascination with the property industry, and it always stuck with me that why in such a humble money earning kind of a industry the builders developers or real estate agents get get bad name mm -hmm. um after all um uh, builders are a um, bunch of crooks right um well not really <laughs> <laughs> um i i guess um uh, let me uh, is that an admission or a... there, there is a there is a second slide here which i need to go to um i'll get there i'll get there <laughs> Um, well, I guess according to the current affair and some dramatic programs on TV, we are all trying to con some poor old lady. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, obviously, running a story on builders who are not who are good on good good terms with their clients, they do the right thing uh, with their clients. They, you know, they're not extorting on variation. Um, it is is not good enough for a high rating TV. Um, but um, but not every builder is doing the right thing, and 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 this is bring me to my point that hiring a builder can certainly be a daunting and and time consuming experience. Um, who who are they actually? You know, are, are, are they ripping me off? Uh, how can yeah. I be certain that this someone I, I can trust? Yeah, true. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. The, the 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 thing about Oh, you know, is this is is this fixed price, um, mm. price, fixed price contract? But mm. you know, am I going to be hit with a whole lot of variations that, you know, should have been there from the beginning, yeah. but for some reason the builders just said no, 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 it wasn't in the original quote. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You put you put, um, you know, uh, much of your trust in someone who's quite literally hold your investment and dream in their hand. So it comes um, as no surprise um, that. To you know, everything need to be considered in this process, and and you know that that you you need to find the right one. Um, and um, Cheryl, um, not too long ago, I thought to myself, let let me ask the public, let me run a survey on social media, and ask everyone who who actually is the ideal builder you can you can rely on. Yeah, what was say, what was the outcome? Uh, I have to say uh, thank you to everyone because the response was absolutely overwhelming. Um, uh, but I can't say I was surprised with what I was reading. Um, mm. it, it, the, the fact that, uh, that uh, it always come down to trust, uh, you know, mm. um, how to get hold of an honest builder in the first place, uh, where, where they referred to by the trusted source. Or did you pick them just out of a gum tree or a selection was purely made based on price, you know? Um, I, I hate to say it, but, but honestly or lack of it is not restricted to building industry. But unfortunately, it really do, does get exposed that way. Uh, and uh, as Mr. Buffett says, honestly, is a very expensive gift. Don't expect it from cheap people. So um, thank you all for your time and input. Um, our team have developed a, an ebook based on your answers called Top 10 Tips to Choose a Quality Builder You Can Trust. And, um, and everyone here will get a copy of it as our gift. Um, so Cheryl, um, let's get into it, shall we? Excellent, so sounds good to me. Awesome. All in your hands. Awesome. Um, here are the top 10 tips to choose a quality builder you can trust based on your answers. So the first tip I'm going to go through tonight is the reputation. Um, I don't know about you, but I really do my research before even buying a new phone, uh, you know. I look at every possible thing before I spend a cent on it. I look at the battery life. Uh, how other people find it? Uh, what the storage size does it have, for instance? Yeah. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure yourself and plenty of other people here um, do the same, yeah? 
Oh, absolutely. Particularly for builders. I know, I mean, we built not long ago, probably about two years ago. Yeah. Um, and the first place we went was online forums. There you go. Yeah. Oh, well, I can't emphasize enough. The exact same applies when looking for a builder. Mm. Um, no, one, no one goes and put a bad testimonial on their website. No, no builders say, hey, look, um, this is what I've built in the past and, and, and it was an absolute trip-off or, you know, the, or the customer wasn't happy. So um, we have to go beyond that facade of things. Uh, go that extra mile and look into their reputation uh, because, uh, frankly, the handful of testimonial that, give you, um, that they give you could very well be a, a bias opinion, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, look at trust, in my opinion, and, and you know, when I, and it's very similar apply when I look for, for um, builders in different region or, or when I look for tradies that I look for trustworthy sources, such as the architects, the, the surveyors that we deal with, other developers and, and landlords who build with them. Um, and, and, and even real estate agents are a good source to go to. Um, word of mouth is the most genuine form of um, uh, determining a, a, if the builder is, is reputable or not. Um, I really have no issue letting any of my client um, to speak to a new client to speak to, a, to an existing client or even come and have a look at what, you know, what we're building and, and have a look you know, and, and deal with it in, in person. Um, and, and we always welcome that. Um, any good builder, in my opinion, uh, should also um, not have any issue because, um, because obviously we believe that we, we, you know, you as a as a as a homeowner or as a, as a developer deserve that security. It's, it's a big investment. Yeah, and just on that, you know, social media is so so rampant in in looking for feedback about any sort of business now. You know, I, I know, um, just like I said, you know, in our local community. So I live, you know, I live in, in the Northwest. Um, and if anyone is looking to build, they often put in the local Facebook group, has anyone built with this person? And there'll be 20, 30 comments, you know. Um, so, you you know, any builder, any, any reputable builder um, will want to be looking at how am I delivering that level of customer service? Absolutely. We we'll, we'll live in a future. Uh, there, there's so much information on your fingertip. Um, so take advantage of it. Do a quick search on Google, on social mm. media. And, and I can assure you, 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 you find so much information, uh, so, you know, that, that overwhelms you, you know? Yeah. Uh, also, um, f um, fish out to see if there are uh, there are member of professional associations such as uh, master builders or HIA, particularly um, look into building awards. Um, they're a great measure to determine if, uh, you know, the quality of a builder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the second tip that I'm going to talk about is qualification, uh, which is very important. Um, whether you are developing a block of unit or, or even a simpler, a smaller renovation job, you need to choose a builder that is licensed and registered in your state and territory. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say every builder is upfront and honest about their qualification. Otherwise, um, what was the point of you know, creating that, that ebook? Uh, but you really need to question uh, when a builder and a project manager either refuse to don't make it clear if they're legally permitted um, to, to be involved with the construction, construction work. Um, in, in some cases, it could just be, um, you know, they forgot to renew their license or it happens to, um, you know, but there are also chances that some builders have had their license revoked and they still continue working, um, you know, in the, in, in the industry without it. Uh, and unfortunately, regulators are historically quite a slow catching these dodgy operators. So, uh, so it is up to myself, um, uh, yourself and anyone um, to be one step ahead and check these. 
Yeah. And in terms of licensing, um, and I, I know you've got your license across, you know, three, three states, it's got mm. New South Wales, Victoria, and Queensland, like how difficult, hard is it for, for builders to actually obtain the license itself? And is that sort of, is that sort of the, the easier part, but then insurance is, is probably the, the trickier, absolutely, the trickier thing. Absolutely. Uh, well, um, obtaining a license, you either come from a trade background um, and, and do a cert four, I think, um, and then, and then uh, with, a, with a building experience, you get a license. Or you come from a, um, a college um, education and then, and then you go through a, an experience and, and get a license. Or recently, I'm not too much involved with it, and I don't know much about it. But recently, um, there are organisations who recognise your um, your experience and the skills, and you go through some, you know, you you do some courses and you get a builder license. But I don't have enough knowledge about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the licensing itself, like I said, you know, it's experience and, and obviously going through the right sort of, um, uh, um, yeah. well, getting, getting the qualifications for that. Yeah. But, you know, the next step then is to, is the experience that you get and also the, the, the insurance side of things that, that yeah. we need to consider. Yeah, certainly. But again, depending in, in which state you live, um, the, 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 there are different classes of builders license. Uh, this is um, this the, this the class of builder license you have. It basically specifies what the scope of work you can carry. Um, you can carry out. Uh, for instance, for a um, for a, um, a restricted class one builder cannot do you know an apartment building or or a bathroom mm -hmm. renovation builder cannot do a class one builder. So you, you have to be, you have to consider that when you're hiring a builder. Mm -hmm. um, you can find most of these information, well, all of these information is, it is on a physical license that, that, um, that builder carry um, alongside the name, license number and expiry date. You can also search these online and, and every estate do have a, um, a website which which you can you can actually pop onto Google and type in license check and and and, and find your state government website that show you all that details. I actually on this um, on this PowerPoint also on a copy of an ebook I listed uh, pretty much every um, every website uh, in different state of Australia that you can do a license check. Hello. <laughs> Him, please. please go ahead, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. My, my little personal assistant's about to go to bed. <laughs> Absolutely. Gorge, gorgeous personal assistant. Thank you. <laughs> so the next tip I'm going to talk about is experience and capability. Now, um, it, it, it must sound funny to say to yourself, does this builder ever even know what, what, what's going on? And I'm sorry to say, uh, it becomes less funny when you hire an ethic conversion builder to manage your construction of a block of unit. It really doesn't matter how great they say they are. Um, it, it, it simply just aren't, they just aren't set up for that job. So question the skills of a builder before engaging them um, as we all have our, our own speciality. Um, some builders come from trade background, as I said before, um, uh, such as carpentry and bricklaying. So their strength is, um, is more towards the um, trade that have worked most of their life. Um, others come from, uh, from project management background and they may be good for organizing or, or they may, may have very good skills in organizing the site and, and project administration, for instance but they have no idea uh, about the um, sort of individual trades and, 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 and nitty gritty of it. Um, the capabilities of a renovator to a home builder, to a project builder, 
volume builder, medium or high density builder, firad builder, commercial or industrial builder, and so on is, is so different that we would, um, we would be here all night if I have to explain it. So when it comes to hiring a builder, make sure they are right for the job. I'm going to move on to the, um, to the next tip, which is the financial capabilities. Um, and Cheryl's is not here to, um, so, um, so imagine, um, in this interview, um, so halfway through this interview live, I just run out of here. She, she is, she's back. Yeah. Um, so Cheryl, you there? I can't hear you. Sorry, I was oh, muted. That's, that's much better. I'm okay, back. Perfect. So you're back. Um, let's say halfway through this live, I just ran out of time. I'm actually talking about financial capability. I don't know if you heard before. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I've been watching. Yeah. So, um, so let's say halfway through this live, I just ran out of time. Pack, my, um, pack myself and left. Um, you turn your head to the side and you're like, okay, uh, what the bloody hell was, was that, right? Mm -hmm. What happened? So now imagine this isn't a life, but it's your development project. Mm. And we were here having a conversation, but we, we weren't here having a conversation, but, but I'm actually building, you, building your project, yeah? Um, I'll come to you and say, Cheryl, I'm out of money. So what do we do now? So just on that, you know, and, and, and the statistic is, is scaringly high, you know, one in five builders go broke every year. That is one of the top concerns. And, and obviously it's one of the top ones that everyone has when they're building particularly also with development sites more so than anything else because, you know, interest in, um, uh, you know, interest keeps going um, and you've got to pay, you know, it can make or break, but basically it, it, will, it, will, it will break a, a project. Yeah, um, it happens so much, it's just ridiculous. Um, and as a developer, you just don't want to be in a position that, that, you know, shrug your shoulders and say, okay, so what do we do now, you know? Um, you don't want to put yourself in that in that situation. So, yeah, and so um, in, in in that situation, I mean, how do um, how do builders go broke? Because you know, for a lot of people, they're like, well, my um, the banks releasing funds at each stage. What's gone wrong? Look, realistically, again, from something that I gathered in the industry. Um, I'm for, oh, fortunate or unfortunate is a lot of builders come from trade background. So they don't have the, the, uh, the, the, the um, financial capability, I guess, uh, unless there is someone within a business, um, you know, uh, working with them in terms of a, in terms of a cash flow and so on. Uh, the, the main mm -hmm. problem I see, there is major progress payment involved with, with building a house or, or a development project. And unfortunately, a lot of the a lot of the newbie builders, they just all of a sudden see under 200 grand deposited into their account, and they don't think, you know, three months ahead that okay, this 300 grand, this 200 grand just deposited, um, you know, need to service a, you know, B, C to Z, you know, so they go and buy a new year, so they go and buy a new boat, and all of a sudden it gets halfway through the project and they become short. So. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. That's that's the reality of of situation, unfortunately. And how do you find out then? And I thought I know you've got some some steps here. Mm -hmm. um, how do you ensure that, as best as you can, that you know your your builder has a strong balance sheet? Uh, well, the, the, when selecting a builder, run a proper due diligence. Yeah, go go back to the step one that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, when, when talking to a previous client, talking to the clients that recommended, ask them about the, their financial position. Talk to the, to the suppliers and account holders that, um, that they're dealing with. Um, 
But go back to the step two that we just talked about. Check online for licensing. This, this, these days, this information is so widely available. If someone you know, had a dispute or had a court order against them, uh, you, you can search them. You, you can search for suspensions. Uh, you, know, you can search if someone liquidated before. You know? uh, if, if, I, I'll, you know, if, if I'm hiring someone uh, that, that, um, get, that got control or got, um, uh, got control over my asset, my, my you know, most pressure asset, I would actually run a check, credit check on them. You know, you want to get $20,000 loan to buy a car, they do a credit check on you. Why wouldn't you? And I don't think a lot of people do think of that in terms of their builders. Like, you know, how, um, how do we empower consumers or developers to be able to go, hey, I should, you know, what, 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 what should we be checking? I know you've got this here, but in, in terms of that, you know, is there a checklist where we go, let's do a credit check. Mm. Let's ask for certain things. You know, how much can we ask from the builder um, or, or their references with their, um, suppliers and 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 tradies, yeah. you know, how much can we actually be having those conversations with people that have worked with them? In my opinion, it depends to the size. I mean, it depends to obviously where you source the builder. Is it someone you picked out of a gum tree, or out of um, Google search, or is it someone recommended by a an architect or you know an engineer that you have worked or real estate that you have worked before, but certainly depends to the size of a job. So if you're doing a, you know, a $5,000 um, renovation, you don't really need a huge security, you know, a, a, a decent progress payment system in place should manage the cash flow. But if you're doing a, you know, a couple of million dollar development, I would ask for all of that. Why wouldn't you, you know? Mm. Um, as I said, like if you're getting a you know five thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar personal loan these days, they they run a credit check on you. Why wouldn't you ask, you know, for a credit check when you're hiring someone for a couple of million dollar job? Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Look, protect your, protect yourself, and always mm. agree. Like in terms of um, progress payment, and you know, put a, a a proper progress payment and retention schedule in place. Uh, and don't pay the builder until the that related you know uh, uh, payment schedule is due. Um, the uh, the um, the next tip I'm going to talk about um, is insurances. Um, your builder should carry valid insurances. And um, let me just. Um, your builder should carry valid insurances, and there are five main ones that uh, that uh, I'll discuss in in a brief brief details. Firstly, is a public liability insurance. Uh, in, in short term, this covers the builders if anyone is injured as a result of working on site. I hate to say it, but if your builder doesn't carry this insurance, the one at fault could very well be you um, because mm. you own the property or, or you're conducting a business as a, as a developer. So the next person they go to is you. Um, the second main insurance is in New South Wales called um, Home Building Com Compensation Cover, um, formerly known as um, Home Warranty Insurance. Mm. Um, and in many other states called Home Warranty Insurance as well. Um, this insurance protect homeowner as a last uh, resort if the builder cannot complete the work or, or fix defect because they either become insolvent or, or had their license suspended or uh, they just disappeared from the face of earth, um, unfortunately. Um, different estates, sort of, there is different limits on it. Um, we were talking before that the, the regulations sort of changing in New South Wales, um, and and um, and hopefully for a benefit of consumers. Um, the next um, 
the next insurance, um, critical insurance for the, um, for the builders that you want to check is the contract work insurance. Um, this is for the, uh, the protection as much as for the builder is also um, is protection for the homeowner or a, or, a, or a developer, which covers the loss or damage of material that, that is work done on site in, in case of, um, you know, fire, you know, uh, it got stolen or, or um, it, it got, uh, you know, damaged in, 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 in a way. And um, next insurance I'm going to talk, insurance policy I'm going to talk about is workers' compensation insurance. Um, you want to make sure that all employees are covered by their employee or by the builder uh, for workers' compensation. Uh, this insurance covers employers who are injured on the building side. So if a, if a builder is not insured, you could be well liable to pay for the cost of that claim. Uh, in, in some circumstances on the workers, um, workers Compensation Act, these, uh, the people, um, these people uh, could be uh, regarded as your employee. So for instance, a sole trader builder who does not operate under a trade or a company, uh, they can they can get workers' compensation. So you want to make sure that you at least get a minimum policy insurance for your um, for your project in this case. So Adam, does that mean if you are the developer mm -hmm. and you own a particular site, and for whatever reason your builder doesn't have workers' comp insurance, if a worker does get hurt on site? that responsibility then falls back on falls the back development. On yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 and um, if you're a homeowner, um, it, it comes to the home. If, if you're mm. doing a renovation at your home and mm. they're a sole tra trader and they don't have a, um, a workers' comp insurance and something happened to them, um, insurance company um, can come to you um, that, you know, that, um, that they're not covered, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, lastly, a, um, another insurance that is involved with a building or development project is professional indemnity insurance, which is not so much related to builders, but covers certifiers, architects, engineers, like building consultant kind of uh, services um, and, and claim against professional services they provide. Um, so their service can, can include advice, design, certification, or, admin, or contract administration, for instance. And you want to make sure what, from, from the, the homeowner, from a developer point of view, you want to make sure that, that uh, those professional hired by your builders do carry the, um, the identity insurance. Um, Obviously, you protect your home, you protect your cars, and some people even protect their, um, you know, to details, they protect their jewelries by insuring them. Uh, so, you know, you want to make sure that you protect yourself and your investment by making sure your builder, um, you know, is properly insured and their insurance are valid. Um, should I carry on, Cheryl, or should we no. sort of pose on, on either of these subjects and, and see if anyone got questions? No, um, please go ahead. If anyone does have questions, just uh, feel free to pop it in the chat. But I know we're sort of half, halfway there, so it's sure. it. We've got, we've got sort of um, guests coming in um, throughout, so that we, yeah, we're good to keep proceeding. Certainly. Um, the next um, tip that I would like to talk about is price and budget. Um, so uh, you, want to, you want to make sure every cent counts, right? Um, it, it could be a, like a building could be a couple of thousand, maybe hundreds of thousand. In some cases, um, I've built a million dollar house before. So um, people can spend that much on a project. So how do we make sure that um, you aren't being ripped off um, in this scenario? Um, you know, how, how do we know that the, the price we are actually being charged is not a ripoff price? 
Um, from my point of view, I think it's simple. You need to do your homework. Um, for, you know, as a developer or, or if, you're, if you're building, uh, this is an investment. So no shortcuts should be taken. Um, you, 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 you deserve to know every dollar that is being spent. So, so when you get that shiny tender package that um, entails all the work to be done, make sure you know what every point is. Um, a, a good builder uh, should provide you with one of those um, uh, properly outlined kind of uh, tender package. Um, the mainly four um, kind of elements that, that, that is really important uh, in a tender package that, that you, wanna, you wanna look for. And just um, briefly go through those points. Um, so what in the world is actually going to be happen on my project? Um, this is what your scope of work will be outlining. So the main one is, the first one is, is the scope of work that, that, um, that affects the price and budget. Um, you want to be comparing apples with apples when you're getting prices from, from builders. Um, so depending on the size of a job, your project, um, depending on the size of a job that you, you're doing, you may want to hire a... Um, a quantity save surveyor to put a, a uniform scope together um, that that you know the builders can can quote on. Then then obviously you're comparing apples with apples. So now in my opinion, a successful project results from constant clarity. And you need the black and white map of what is going to happen in your project. And that what the building plan um, is. Um, so there are record of architectural design, um, engineering specification, council consent or soil test, hydraulic and so on. So building plan is another document that, that you want, um, that need to be considered and it affects the price and the budget of a project. Um, the next one are, um, that, that so many uh, there are so many things that happen in a project and a builder doesn't, we don't wake up in the morning and say, okay, um, today I'm going to frame up. Uh, no, um, they are building the schedule. It doesn't happen that way. Um, so your builder must highlight the time frame and dates for significant part of a project um, which, which allow you to see what uh, the job entails, how long you're going to prepare yourself for the project to last, and obviously organizing your finance, yeah? So building a schedule is an important element which affect the price and budget of a project. And, and, and the last one, which is quite important, is a finishes the schedule, which an itemized list of material, fittings and fixtures that you want um, in your in your project, um, you know, a, a, a from from a, a sort of a low to high end project, there is a massive difference in price. Um, so this is one of the main element that that um, that affects the price and budget of a project. And a good builder should give you a trade package that that outline all of these in details. If you're getting a one page quotation from a builder saying that, look, I'm gonna build you know, a $400,000 house for you. That's not good enough. Um, that's not the builder you wanna go with. Um, these details are essential for, for you to make a decision. Um, um, and just on that last bit, sorry, Adam, with the finishes schedule, so that's fixtures and fittings. Yeah. Um, is that something that should be expected that the builder provides you with that schedule or is that something where the, the Look, client do. should? Um, I've, got, I've, got, um, I've got Ida um, uh, doing all the design and doing all the interiors. So we do provide a schedule of finishes. Um, some builder do a, um, a um, provisional sum or a prime cost mm. items. Mm. Um, which is, you know, a budget given. So look, you know, uh, we, 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 we provide you with such appliances for this budget price. 
Um, but you, you, you know, if if um, if a builder are you know are, are up to date with their books and and they 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 do they are, you know they are updated with the market and what's available and and uh, we usually provide with every um, you know uh, a building appraisal that we offer to our clients. We do include a preliminary design and we do include a um, a, um, a finishes a schedule that that suits the or you know suits the customer lifestyle or or, or selection excellent yeah um given that tender package is a, you know that that tender package is really important document so give give that a good read um you will be surprised how much information it is giving you and 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 will give you an idea of how much time and money you're spending so that you can avoid any, any additional cost or any, you know, unpredictable kind of cost. Um, but don't forget um, that cheap doesn't necessarily means, um, mm. you know, mean mm. good. Um, so a few, a few questions there on that yeah. tender package for any developer um, and looking, looking to tender out their work to, to builders, I, you know, what's a good number of builders that they should be getting these tender packages from? It depends how very the price is. So if you're getting, I usually get price from three, um, for, in my case, I'm project managing a job and we've got mm. tradesmen involved, yeah? So in a smaller scale, we always get three prices for individual trade. Mm. It does, and we've got a, we've got a, We've got an idea of what, for instance, a per square meter plasterboard on a ceiling, 10 mil plasterboard on a, on a ceiling cost. And if these plasters come in all within 5% of each other, you can use that as a comparison. But if one come, you know, very low and one, you know, it's just a big different, then get more of them. It just, it has to be done. Um, same goes with builders. Um, I start with three. If the prices are, um, you know, within a small vicinity, a decision can be made. Just you have to make sure that the, they 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 coding on the same scope. Mm. They coding based on the same um, schedule of finishes. They coding based on the same, um, you know, time frame to start and finish. You know, obviously, the longer the project takes, um, the the more it costs the developer. So you want to reduce that as much as you can. Yeah, absolutely. And, and realistically for you on average, you know, and, and um, understanding, you know, most of your, your pro, uh, product is residential. How long does it take you to put together a tender package? Look, we've got, now we, we are lucky or well, not, not so much lucky, but over years we developed a, a set documents that we don't really need to look far. So I know, um, you know, I know what's the, um, the, the, the document is already there. We just need to amend it to suit a particular project. Um, uh, most reputable builders do have that and is not a huge effort to put a tender package together. Um, mm -hmm. But depending on a complexity of a project, some architectural projects, which unusual sort of finishes involved, then you need to do a bit more research and there's a lot, you know, a bit more involved. But in a standard house that, that we, you know, we built, for instance, in Brisbane, um, built for medium kind of range um, finishes, um, we usually put a tender package together within an hour. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And anything sort of, if you're going to do a development that's outside of your, your usual, obviously it will take, it takes longer. So the longer more information, it, 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 respect is vast way. So if you're expecting a builder to do an accurate price, uh, you know, uh, and, 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 uh, and um, competitive price on your project, the more information you provide, the more accurate you're going to get. And so, what sort of information are you talking about? Um, at least the, 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 the actual, um, you know, construction architectural drawing, uh, rather than a concept kind of architectural drawing, mm. uh, a, mm. a um, uh, you know, the engineering details, the hydraulic details, the drainage details. Um, if you've got a bill of quantity is most builders 
um, it will sit down and, and do a takeoff of a project. So that saves time. If, if, if I mentioned before that in some project, it makes sense to get a, uh, to a scope done by a quantity surveyor. Then, you know, the quantity is done and the scope is uniform, everyone pricing based on the same thing rather than guesstimating, you know, what, what, what goes into bill. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, to be a straight, don't choose purely based on price. And especially yeah. if your builder is quite a bit lower or substantially higher than the rest. Um, um, at the end of the day, in this industry, uh, what you pay for is what you get. And, um, and that couldn't be further from the truth. And in my opinion, quality build equal uh, quality result. I'm going to move on to the, um, to the next tip, which is a building contract. Um, we all know that contract are legal agreement um, and uh, we know they are intended to protect the interest of both parties, right? Um, for us, uh, they should have clear guideline on a range of uh, potentially contagious um, issue in a project. Uh, and that's really important uh, that we, uh, we, um, we look at it. And, and it's really important that the builder you hiring um, recommends the right contract for you. A um, few items that need to be um, in the, um, in the building contract um, are a detailed scope of work, a time frame uh, for when the work is to be completed, um, the total contract price, for instance, um, the, all the cost involved in a project, does, it, uh, does the contract include it, the, does the private certification or the engineering and so on, or, or not a, a time frame when the payments are due, um, the payment is scheduled, we discussed before, and what happens if there are delays? What happens if there are variations or disputes? So you, you wanna pick a contract that is, um, that is suitable for your project. Um, you won't just be signing your name away on anything that you, you don't 100% know. Um, it's to protect your interest, right? So it was getting legal advice before signing a contract um, with your builder um, as, as it must comply with some relevant regulations in different states. I'm always um, being asked that, you know, which contract is the best is, is, is a standard, um, you know, HIA or, or MBA contract or is it, like, is it a lump sum or a cost plus is the right contract to use. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not a lawyer, um, but I, I just outlined the difference um, uh, that, that need to be considered when you choose choosing any of these contracts. Um, uh, it really depends on the type of a project and level of trust you've got on a, on a builder. Have you worked with them before, um, you know, uh, and, and, and what, complexity the project um, involved. Um, and a standard contract are essentially a kit form document um, that, that are produced by organizations such as Master Builders or HIA or Fair Trading here in New South Wales. And that's just name a few of them. Um, and then there is, um, there is more common form of building contract, which is the fixed or lump sum. And this is this this one is really uh, used more more widely, and and um, and um, if you are on a tight budget and you know uh, and you want to know the final cost up front, this is this is the contract to be used. Um, it's possible that there are um, you know clauses for variation in this sort of contracts as well, um, where the cost of some items are not yet you know, you don't know the cost of an item on those variations. So, but usually with this um, fixed lump sum contracts, um, the, there is a cap on it. So, you know, such as the, the, um, 
the prime cost item that you put a cap on you know a, a certain amount of um, allowance for a certain product and lastly there is a cost plus contract which are more open-ended uh, with the builder putting their margin on top of a cost of a labor and material uh, with no real definitive limit of how much will be spent. Um, I would only uh, use this form of contract if you have Levi in your budget and you 100% trust your builder. Otherwise, don't use this contract. I would say that would be mainly for, you know, reno renovations of some sort where there's so many different variables. Absolutely. Some, some highly detailed architectural project is it, difficult to price as well. So, and, and usually a specialized builder do that sort of work anyway. So. Mm. And what sort of margin can you typically expect a builder to put on top of their costs? Depends the market. In this pandemic, um, coronavirus market until a month ago, you know, we have seen 10% and, and, and mm. 8%, but market picked up again. So an average um, builder's margin is about 20%. Um, I have seen uh, people charging more and I've seen people charging less, but 15 to 20% is reasonable for, mm. for the amount of work they put in. Yeah. 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 So consider which contract is chosen um, and, and by who uh, did you choose the contract or the builder ch chosen the contract and, and ask yourself, um, you know, the certain clause was um, struck out where a special condition added, did you get your contract checked by a specialist, a property lawyer at least, or, or a construction lawyer specialist, um, I, I recommend. Um, just on, on that point about which, um, which contract was chosen and by whom, is it not generally expected that the builder is the, pro the one that, that prepares the contract? Uh, yes, it is. Um, and, and one of the main reasons this, this, I think, came up uh, because a lot of our our developer friends have had that experience that you know a right contract has been recommended or hasn't been recommended. But at the end of the day, we are builders. We are not lawyers. Um, you know, yes. it's important that the right contract used for a right job. I don't. I wouldn't use a standard fair trading contract for a two million dollar development. You know, that yes. may suit building a house may suit a you know renovation but it definitely doesn't suit a a major development project mm -hmm. yeah. shall we move on yeah please yeah. move on okay um the next tip i'm going to talk about is communication so sometime i've had a conversation with a client and i saw them nodding along and 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 with with not really idea of what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then, and then, um, and then um, it clicks in my head that uh, out of this conversation, maybe they only got 60% of it. Um, and the rest of it was builder's jargon. So, um, and it is a habit. It is, is just, you know, it, when, you, when you work in this industry, um, you know, we do abbreviate, you know, we, we, you know, four B twos and, and, you know, sparkies and, and, and chiffies and, you know, LVLs and, uh, from, from a homeowner, from a developer point of view, um, you need to ask question. Um, you know, uh, so, sometimes, uh, we come to a point of realization and we start to communicate in, in this way and, and, and that, that are easier to understand. But after all, um, not everyone, our tradesmen, un understand these, these abbreviation. I'm sure there are people here in this live that, that had similar kind of experience. Cheryl, have yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, it's, it's at no fault of the builder because this is what you live and breathe. And, and when you're speaking with trades and, and they know exactly what you're, you're talking about. But, um, and here's what we're, you know, what you're, you're looking to do is to empower also consumers to ask the, ask the questions. And even if you might think that they are stupid questions, because there are no stupid questions because 
at the end of the day, it might be a, a, a valid, valid question because you're spending a lot of money. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If, if, if you didn't understand something, ask, ask them to, to explain it. Mm. Um, don't know an item in your scope go over it again i didn't understand what is lvl what is yeah. you know what you know what are, what are you talking about you know so a quality builder in my opinion will invest the time and sit with you and explain the items uh to terms that you understand and and will give you that extra mile um to regularly update you regarding the forecast progress details of a project and, and issues may be concerning your you know your project in future uh, be sure you have complete clarity of of what's going to happen and, and your building process of what you're going to build can i just just share uh, sort of from personal experience as well adam and i said we we built uh, about two two years ago and and i have to give um uh, big kudos to my husband because we we even though we built with a a project builder mm. there were obviously there's always variation right before we started building we say well, no 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 we're not the type of people that do a lot of variations and about 50 variations later um you know there's this they're like oh okay maybe there's more than that but i think um the one thing that that he did and, and this is you know and he's very very detailed is he made sure that each time there was um a change that was made and they come back with the quote that it matched with exactly what the builder understood that was happening and that we understood that was happening and the cost or whatever, you know, even the sizing, the color, everything else was that we were all on the same page. Yeah. Um, and and that, that clear communication um, is so important. But again, it's, it's about empowering the consumer to be able to go through that process as well, because you know, at the end of the day, no one's, no one's perfect mm. and human errors do, do happen mm. um, that you are across. What are the changes that you've made in your, your variation prior to, you know, having a fixed price or whichever, and that you know that if, if it's a specific sort of door that you've, that you've requested, but then you've changed it for something else mm. that you go back and check. Um, and then, and then, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm aware that not, not everyone, not every consumer is going to, to have that level of patience or detail or knowledge in that particular situation. What, what would you think would be the best way or a solution for, um, uh, whether it's a homeowner or developer to just make sure that everything is, you know, all, all teed up everyone's you know crossed their t's and dotted their eyes from the consumer point like you know is it um is there someone else that's able to go through with them and say hey you know we made this variation just want to be able to sit down with you and go all right this variation's done this is what we've changed it to and, and ticked it off what what's the best process and what what's the sort of process that you take your clients through look um uh, it, it, we, it's going to take you back to you know one of the earlier steps that um, that you want to make sure that the, the the scope that given one one of the main um, element of avoiding variation is to get it right in the first place. Mm. Sometimes is unavoidable. So. Uh, you know, a, a door you wanted a certain way, and 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 it was done differently. That's that's unexcusable. That should have been in the um, you know in a scope of work from the first place. But I can understand if there is a variation allowance for rock excavation, for instance. In you know, it was builder don't know what's underground, or mm. you know, or. Um, uh, you know, or unforeseen stuff such as pipe on the, you know, the pipes that didn't show in a, in a, um, you know, doll before you dig report. And we have had, you know, instant that that happened. Um, I guess the process moving forward um, and, and, you know, it, it does happen. Um, it comes to a budget as well. So if your budget is tight, and you can't afford to pay more for the door. Why should you? That's a mistake was from the builder and they have to cop it. 
Um, but but if it was a mistake from Bath's side and there is a compromise, then um, you know on that example is a is a easy one. Uh, you know that that a, a replacement door maybe you know three four hundred dollars different. The installation of a door shouldn't make any difference. It just cost it of a door itself, isn't it? Um, so that that I don't think it'd be a difficult decision, but if if, for instance, um, you know, you 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 get a variation of tens of thousands of dollars for a a subfloor for a tile, and um, and you can't come to agreement, um, the other option is to get a third party involved um, as a uh, you know as a um, what they call them a, a, a mediator that they come. And, and have a look at the side. Usually quantity surveyors do that. Um, you know, they come to a side and said, okay, you know, you've done this much of a subfloor, um, you know, this much material used, estimated this much labor will be, you know, utilized and, and here, here, you know, here is the cost. Uh, if, if you can come to an agreement. Yeah, yeah. But recording, make, you know, a written record of everything is done is the best, you know best practice you know if yeah. um, you know we've got a site diary everyone that that attends site they sign in and they sign up so we know you know what time they they uh, our foreman went in you know how many chippy we had on site how many carpenter we had on site what time the electrician came in and what time they left so if it comes to a variation in a cost plus kind of basis um, you know, we've got a diary to go back to, and we, I usually ask the customer to keep a record as well. Mm, also, excellent. we also keep a a, a camera on site, um, most, because a lot of the projects that I run, especially development projects, are remote. Uh, you know, they're, they're not all in Sydney, so we do get a motion detector camera on site, and as soon as someone enters, there's an alert on my phone that you know someone's at the front door and. <laughs> That's excellent. What, time, what time they they came in and what time they left? Big brothers watching. I know. I know. Technology is available. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we're just for one of our sites. We're um we're getting a quote for for a camera as well to be put on site because you know it's it's great great for the developer, great for the the builder, and great for anyone else. You know, investors or all of that to to be aware and see see the development come together as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okie dokie. All right. We're on the home run. I know, I know. Um, okay. So um, the next tip I'm going to talk about is the relationship. Um, your relationship with your builder should have direct communication. We just talked about direct communication. Um, acknowledgement of your needs, your goals, and complete clarity. Um, it should be built on a base of mutual respect for one another. When I say, you know, have respect the builder's time and they give you back you know if, if you give them enough information that they can work with they don't need to run around they come back to you with the, with the more accurate and 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 more more competitive kind of code um respect each other's time and and um that is something you can usually from the first phone call you can sense that okay you know how this builder feel you know are they you know, are they thorough with their time? Or, you know, um, usually I do sense that when I talk to a tradesman over the phone. Um, any builder can just go, yeah, all right. Um, I've done those kind of projects before, yeah. Uh, and the client was really happy and they, they, just, they just ended there. But only a handful of builders will take the time to, to sit and ask questions, uh, you know, guide you through every options that are available to you, addressing all your concern and, 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 and again, respecting your time, you know, uh, you know, you're putting time into it. So, um, yeah, and also that gut feeling, um, you know, um, don't underestimate it. Um, my, my good old gut feeling has given me the right answer most of the time, you know, um, you sort of do get a gut feeling, you know, with the, even from the very beginning, you start building relationship with the builder that, you know, who they are and, and where they stand is the personality wise. Uh, building project is quite a, 
um, major investment, not only from a financial point of view, but from time point of view and um, from emotional point of view. So you want to make sure that, you know, you, you are sort of compatible from a personality side as well. Excellent. Um, moving on um, to the next tip, um, who is um, the team? So uh, by the end of your research, you've built a relationship that we just talked about with your builder. You know who they are. Um, you've agreed on a code. Uh, you trust them and have a good feeling about the choice you made. Yeah. Now, um, uh, I've been doing this for 21 years and I can assure you that for 21 years, I've not been um, the only guide on the only tradesman or only guy on site uh, with the hammer and nails getting things done. Yeah. So it's obvious that builder you engage isn't the one doing the work. Um, uh, some do, you do have the tool belt builder and they do some of the work, but um, you know, they do have a team um, behind them. All builders work with professional, with suppliers, with uh, retailers and contractors who, uh, who support them, their excellence, I guess. And, and I don't think I'm speaking for only myself when I say that. Um, they've been most likely work alongside each other for years, developing a strong and lasting relationship. Um, knowing, that, um, knowing that there is a harmony on site uh, assures that the work will progress smoothly. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so go ahead and ask your builder about their team, how long they, they have worked together and why is it that particular architect or that particular um, individual they have included in their business. And, and uh, at the end of the day, um, who takes responsibility for, for their output? Um, who will be the site supervisor and, and their roles and responsibility? Site supervisor, is the most important on a job site. How many jobs this job supervisor is running? Are they having you know, 35, 40 jobs on their book at the time? Do they spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day on each job site? Or yeah, they've got one or two jobs. Again, depending the complexity, some project builders do run you know, 30, 40 projects at the time. Um, and and um, you... You also want to make it a condition in your contract. Um, you know, it's not just a question that I ask, but, um, but you know, if a particular site foreman that you like, there is a, 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 I've got a JV partner in Brisbane, which we've been building together for 16 years. And he wants a particular site foreman that we've got, that, that is the condition we've got. Um, you know, that particular site foreman, goes from one build to another and it's just for that JV, JV partner that we work with. So you may want to, you know, consider, you know, put that as part of your, your contract. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, um, we got we, to the we've end come, of it, I guess. We've yeah. come to the end of it. It's, yeah. it's very, very comprehensive. And um, we've got a question here from Pia who is asking, what would be a reasonable fee to pay to a builder for him to look at a detailed architectural design and give some feedback and an estimate of the build cost before lodging the DA? Yeah, so the project is three town hours. The builder has asked 150, oh, so 1,500. Is it okay for him to ask to be paid before he does the report or should I pay after? Look, that preliminary, again, I can't talk on behalf of other builders. Mm. We offer a preliminary estimate if the design is already done. Um, if, if the client's already got a design and, and um, they've got a budget in mind, we do a preliminary estimate based on the, the budget and, and we rec make recommendation that, okay, based on your budget, and, and this is the estimated construction cost and this is a level of finishes you can put in there, yeah? But once, but if, if the, if the um, 
uh, if there is no design in place, yeah, you want to build an architectural house and there is no design in place and you want to engage a, a custom sort of design and build a specialist builder to do that. And we do that as well. And we do charge a preliminary, um, so, you know, a, a consultation fee. Uh, and we do provide a preliminary design um, that a customer can have a look at and say, yeah, okay, you know, and then we progress from there. Uh, we charge a very minimal, we spend about four hours on that and we charge for four hours, which is, you know, roughly about $400. Um, mm. I can't talk on behalf of, I don't know the complexity of a project. Some projects do require a lot of time to invest to estimate a cost. Um, but $1,500, in my opinion, is a bit overrated. Mm. All right. Um, another question here. With regards to finishing, what would you recommend the developer do on their own? What, in terms of finishes? Yes, that's interesting. Are you talking about the finishing schedule, um, Paradise, or are you talking about to lock up stage and like painting, landscaping? Ooh. Yeah, but I'm trying to find these messages. <laughs> uh, chat. So if you go to the right. Okay. Okay. Uh, with regards to finishing, what would you recommend a developer to do on their own? Um, look. Um, what the developer or to do on their own, probably the best place to start, decide what level of finish you want to, uh, to build. Obviously, a development that you do in, in Mossman, Sydney, very different to development that you do in, in Kellyville is very different to the development you do in Liverpool. So decide on a level of finishes you want to apply to your development and it all... Um, comes to the end product, you know, what, what sort of customers buy your product. And once you decide on that, um, you know, uh, online is the best place um, to start, you know, uh, uh, put a, 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 um, a selection board um, together for yourself. Uh, Pinterest is not a bad place to start, you know, to start selecting the style of finishes uh, you want to pick probably Ida is a lot better person to answer that question than me in terms of uh, selecting finishes. But, but um, yeah, if you want, I can get Ida to reply to paradise. Can you do that? Ida? Cheryl, I'm here if you'd like me to respond. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Um, so to answer that question, Paris, all I can, I have most of my experience in doing residential finishes where it's more custom and tailored to them, but in a development situation, I would recommend doing as much research as you can into the area. Look what current house trends are and, you know, surrounding houses. What do people who buy there like the most and then research around that. So what is easy to maintain, what colors they use, what contrasts nicely with the landscape of, you know, your surrounding environment. And then that's really the research, like your basic research. And then you can look into specific finishes that are best suited. And it really also depends on your budget also. Ida, you sound a lot older than your age. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's excellent. <laughs> um, that's great. That's a great response there. Yeah. But uh, uh, if any, Ida, if Paradise does want to speak to you about, about that as well, please put your details in, in the chat also. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll leave my email there for them. Sure. Uh, so Felicia's asking, if the builder hasn't done the proper or good work and avoids to fix a few things, can we report, um, can we report them and complain to certain organisations? If so, which one? So this uh, comes to warranty and fair yeah. trading on Absolutely. Um, that, that's why it's really important to make sure your license is, your, your builder is licensed in, in the state and territory they're building. Um, if they are licensed, uh, builder, I've seen a lot of project managers um, or they, they, in the construction industry that they, 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 they don't call them builders, they call them project managers and they're not licensed um, to do so legally. 
So if, if, if they're licensed, you can make complaint to the, to the relevant licensing authority in New South Wales, be fair trading, um, in Queensland, be QVSA. Um, and there is a process involved um, to, um, um, to, um, to make a complaint. Um, if, the, if the builder don't respond to it, you know, usually result in cancelling their licence or, or putting a claim against their home warranty um, insurance. So, yes. Awesome. And um, unless anyone else has any other questions, can you please add the link to the ebook to the chat as well, please, Adam? Certainly, I will try. <laughs> um, and I'll also we'll get it off you on Facebook Messenger as well, because then I can add it to um, uh, the video description when we put it up on the group tomorrow. Screen sharing has stopped. Sharing video is closed. Okay, so I should be just here. So if anyone, um, this uh, we, we documented this um, this presentation on an ebook. So if anyone want access to it. Trying to copy and excellent. Is that it? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Easy. Well so, done. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. Ex um, so, yeah, don't leave your day job, Adam. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That, that was that was great i think that was that was very comprehensive Thank um you. and i think it's it, it's a good good um, reference there for people um who are looking to do their particularly if they're doing their first few developments there um to go through and, and create a little bit of a checklist for yeah. yourself as to all right well i'm going to be talking to to three builders um going to have a similar sort of conversation there um, what do I need to make sure that I'm, I'm doing? Um, and Sean, last question here for you, Adam. Is there any bit of advice that you would add to the 10 things? Um, look, bit of advice. Uh, look, the builders are, the, in my opinion, um, from not only being a builder, but I'm a developer as well. Um, the, mo the builders are the most important piece of puzzle in your building project and and realistically uh, mm -hmm. we, we we take a good 50 percent of the risk of the project um, you know um, so um, the aim should be to hire the best in a game um, mm -hmm. based on your project you know you, you want to hire if you're building a house obviously you want to you know a, a custom design house you want to find the best custom design house in, in, in the game. So, um, so at the end of the day, um, look for the best in the industry, do your research, you know, do this step-by-step, 10-step. Step. Again, these steps or these, um, these um, 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 uh, tips are obviously given to me by, by, um, by the community. Um, mm -hmm. I just put it together in a sort of a ebook format. But, you know, go through these steps, make sure that, you know, you, 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 you find the best one suited for your project and, and the, the, the right builder, um, you know, at the end of the day uh, should become the, you know, with, with, with the developer and a builder together, it should become a forbidden, formidable uh, kind of a team to achieve a more successful result, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Adam. Um, I appreciate your the time for putting putting that together. Um, I know I've learned a, a lot um, in in this session as well. Thank you, anyone that's contributed to that. Um, and if anyone wants to get in contact with you about their projects, whether it's uh, like you said, you do quite a lot of work in Queensland. Obviously, you you build in New South Wales and Victoria as well. 
feel free to reach out to Adam. Uh, what's the best email? Um, best email, they can either email to adam at ownerdeveloper.com.au or um, just go through a general inquiry. If they email directly to myself, they get a quicker response. So yeah, adam at ownerdeveloper.com.au. I'm going to type it in a... Pop that in the chat. Um, Felicia's just said, I'm talking about the builder that was used by the developer. We bought off the plan property from the developer three years ago, which was settled in December, 2019. None of, no, neither the developer nor builder want to take responsibility. Which organization can we report to in Victoria? Um, what's the equivalent of fair trading in Victoria, Adam? Uh, I'll tell you, I'll just have a look on my license and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there's a licensing board in Victoria as well. I can't remember the organization, unfortunately. I can't find it handy, Cheryl, but um, if you give me, uh, it's quite simple to Google it. Uh, there's very similar to QBSA and, and um, fair trading in Victoria, which, um, um, which they, they obviously, the, you, they know the builder's um, license details, yeah? They can make a complaint to, let me just do a quick search. Actually, it was in my presentation, so. Yeah, I saw that. I saw it, yeah. Just went. Um, so the organization called um, Victorian Building Authority and the website is www. I'll put it on a I'll put it on a message box. Yeah, go ahead there. And it's it's settled fairly recently, and I'm assuming also you've got final occupancy as well. Um, again, speak to, speak to um, have a chat to the VBA to start off with. Yeah. Um, and if if you really need to, hopefully you don't have to have to speak to a lawyer as well. Uh, but to try them to begin with as your yeah. first point of call, Felicia. Okie dokie. We better wrap, wrap that up, Adam. Thank you so much again. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone, for being so patient with me. I, I'm no, a builder. I'm not, I'm not a presenter. So. <laughs> no, you, I think you did wonderfully. There was, I, I don't think there was really much sort of builder's jargon in, in there at all. It was very, it was very clear, um, clear and, and concise and, and definitely highlighted sort of the main things that we need to be looking out for. So appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for uh, Ida for being here as well. And we'll see everyone soon. Keep safe. Everyone from Melbourne, keep safe, wash your hands, um, you know, toe taps and, and, and elbow taps. Um, be safe, everyone. Absolutely. Good night. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye.